Good morning. As you know, every Wednesday we have a demo. We do, we spend three weeks on each of the main apps of the course. There will be two more besides Notion. This is the third week and therefore the last demo for the Notion app. The purpose of this class is to introduce some of the advanced features of Notion. However, those features will not be required for the first digital assignment in Notion. Still, the reason I'm showcasing those advanced features is not only for you to know more about this specific app and how it can be considered a wiki or a knowledge-based, knowledge-focused digital tool, but also because besides the digital assignment on Notion, there is a final digital project, which is based on one of the apps. And in case you decide to utilize Notion for your final project, which is something I really recommend of the three apps, Notion, Evernote, DocuWiki, your best choice might be by far Notion because it's easy enough, powerful enough, whereas Evernote is easier, but not as powerful. And if you want to leverage the user of Evernote and its limited advanced feature to build something more complex, in the end, you have to put more of an effort. And the last app, DocuWiki, is great. It is also professional grade kind of server-side software, meaning it's installed not on your computer, but on a server, and then you run it through your browser. In that case, my own personal domain will be the server, the VP, uh, VPS server, where uh, your, your wiki would be installed and run. But it does require a little bit of coding, and some might be resistant to that and, and find it more cumbersome to work with, okay? At the same time, the purpose of this class and also the continuation with the hands-on activity on Friday is to make sure that everyone knows how to post and share the first written assignment, My Digital Life, which is due this Friday, and also how to complete the first digital assignment on Notion, which is the creation of a page with some of the basic features. So not the advanced feature that we saw today, but some of the basic features, and I will focus more on that during Friday activity, okay? As I said earlier, feel free to schedule an appointment on Zoom or visit me during office hours if you need one-to-one -one assistance with the use of these apps. And of course, obviously, if you add it to this class at the end of the adjunct period, Friday night of last week, then simply contact me, request an extension, if appropriate, if you're still going through the videos, the YouTube videos of the lectures, but you need more time to digest the material, become familiar with the app, and be able to produce the written assignment on my digital life and the page on Notion. Do that before the deadline, just present a plan. I'll be done by this period, I need this time for the videos I need to have one meeting with you uh, next week, etc. That's fine, okay? As long as you handle that professionally. As you see here, this is the end of week two, where you find the description of the digital assign of the written assignment, My Digital Life. Length is between three and 500 words. And you do find the word count, right? I'll show you but in Notion you easily find the word count for a given page. So you have to create a separate Notion page. So I'm not talking about the same page where you will 
showcase your abilities, how you handle Notion and its features. You create a Notion page, you put there the text, you can write it there if you want, you can write it in your favorite editor or word processor and then paste it there, that's fine. And then you share the link with me and that will be the very first part of my demo today. Stop me, ask me to go back, repeat, clarify, because you need to go through these steps. They're very simple, actually. But again, feel free to ask even the simplest questions, right? And I said, share the link with the instructor via email, but if you follow my steps, a message will be automatically sent by Notion to me. You don't really have to get into email yourself. The instructions, uh, the link here, sends you back to the talking point for the discussion that we engaged in on your digital lifestyle during the first week. And you find several questions. As I said before, you don't have to answer all those questions. You may not have a valid, appropriate response to some of those points. Those are just there to inspire you, to guide you. And it's not a questionnaire. So you don't have to provide answer to question number one, two lines. Answer to question number two, four lines, etc. No, you're supposed to create a narrative, right? Where you talk about your digital lifestyles, the apps and software programs that you use more frequently or that you love the most, etc. Okay? And it's a personal reflection. It's not like you have to engage in research activity or have sources. Not at all. You just have to reflect on your habits when it comes to using your digital devices. Your main digital device, whatever tablet, computer, laptop you use for your academic assignments, for your academic email, and also other devices that may place, play a role in your life because you engage in reading from such a device, or listening to music, watching movies, etc. So use those instructions, but exercise your discretion. You're in charge of this assignment. You have to make it pertinent and interesting also, okay? And really, there is no right or wrong, however, your responsibility would be to make it convincing, to make it clear, right? To make it a clear and convincing picture of your digital profile as a user who's not any user because you are a student, okay? So don't just talk about your use of Instagram, TikTok, or Spotify. Keep in mind, you are students most of your time, so I want to see that reflected in this narrative. I want to show you at the end of week three, the other assignment, the digital assignment, which is the creation of a Notion page. And let's review the instructions and we can also talk or talk for longer on Friday about this. So this is different from the final digital project and we'll talk about it later in this case as you see my goal is to assess your ability to organize and format any kind of meaningful content for my demo i wrote hardly any text and, and didn't make much sense right i wrote this is a title this is a paragraph and i did it also because i'm such a slow typist that uh, I, I would need too much time to put some meaningful content meaningful i mean Again, cannot be nonsense, but it could be anything, doesn't have to be academic. It would be nice if you put some notes about a reading or notes from another class, but as far as I'm concerned, if you want to organize one or two recipes in there, you can do that, right? And that would be meaningful because you would design the page and organize the page based on the nature of the content. So if I have a recipe, I will need to have a list of ingredients, whether it be bulleted or numbered list. I would need to have some pictures 
of the dishes or pictures of the ingredients. I would feel the need to include a video of someone else uh, doing this recipe. You don't have to create the video yourself, but you can embed a suitable YouTube video. You would have links to other versions of the same recipe in blogs about food and cuisine, etc., etc. So all the features that you want to showcase would find a reason to be used and apply to that content. And based on the content, you can realize what kind of structure you want to give to this page. What would be section one? What subsections would be included in there, right? And based on that, you want to have a table of contents listing the recipe and the various subsections so that I can jump to ingredients or preparation or the video from the start of the page, okay? Based on that, you may want to add a certain kind of image, even an image on top of the page, etc. It's up to you. The purpose is for you to, see, to, to show me that you can organize the material and that you can format, right? You may have the ingredients in italics, or you may add some bold to uh, uh, cast a, a, a light to attract attention on some keywords. So inside one page, that, that is fine if it is one page. However, if you want to show that you can create a sub page within that page, that's fine, but that's not a requirement. Include some kind of list, include links, include images, embed at least one YouTube video, have headings and subheadings, have a table of content, and all of those things were demoed during week one and week two if you need to review those videos both on Wednesday, especially on Wednesday, and some of Friday was also spent demoing those features, okay? Again, I will ask you again for, for questions and provide clarification on Friday, but I wanted to introduce that as well so that you can follow some uh, with some of today's demo and demo features with a specific kind of focus and attention. As usual, I will open my test page, which is linked in the class website, in the same page we were looking at However, the page is linked to another Wednesday, it must be week one or week two, okay? So the first thing I'll do, as I promised, I'll look at the interface and see what we find on the left and on the top, top left, top right of the page, including sharing, and go through these, and you tell me when to slow down you interrupt me with questions and I can go back or I can explain, clarify, etc. So, on the left side, I can have a floating sidebar, right? And as usual, the pop-up also tells me what keyboard combinations or shortcut I can use to have the pop-up appear. And keep in mind, the reason for this is that people who are into computer work, from programmers to other kinds of cognitive professionals, are very fast typists and don't want to use the mouse because it is slower. They want to use the keyboard as much as possible because it is faster. This floating sidebar shows me my favorite pages, the pages that I for which I click the star on the other side. And of course, I can not only have them in my favorite section, but I can only move them up and down. Let me show you some of them. Okay. So on top of this, I have books to download uh, and I have a vast collection of digital uh, documents and articles, my first note, etc. If I click on these arrows, then I can make the sidebar permanent. If I have a screen that is big enough, 
then I can keep that always to the side so that I can jump quickly from one page to the next. In here, I also find the quick find, and I'll showcase that later. The quick find was initially when the app was first introduced rudimentary, and now it is a bit more advanced, although not as advanced as the search in other apps. Let's go to the other side, the top right corner, and we'll start with share. And as you see, the pop-up tells me share or publish to the web. And this time there is no shortcut because I need to go through more steps before I proceed with sharing or publication. So I click share, and this is what I see. I have the option to click here and make this so the default would be private. However, the default is not private for a sub page that is connected to a higher level page that is public. So if I set a page as public, if I click that, meaning anyone with the link can view, then any sub page created within that page will inherit the property of being a public Page. Now, notice that it says anyone with the link can view, because actually, even though Google is trying to go through the entire internet on a regular basis and store the content of the internet for indexing on their servers, it doesn't really happen with automatically with Notion pages. You know that the way indexing happens is that Google sends out bots through uh, the internet to collect content. However, anyone can stop those bots, at least when it comes to regular bots by Google. If, if it is bots sent out by hackers or by uh, fishy companies, then it might be a problem. Otherwise, for an official professional company such as Google, I can simply, on my personal domain, for example, on drefidi.com, in the root of their uh, folder, uh, in the root folder of that space on the server, where I have my index HTML file that will appear automatically when someone types andreafedi.com, I can put a one line text file with simple instructions to prevent Google bots and other regular policy compliant bots from indexing my pages. If I put that, it's like an official statement saying you don't have permission to index my material. I believe the same happens with Notion. There must be inside the settings um, a place where you decide, you turn on and off, you check on and off the option of having your public pages indexed by Google or not. Regardless, material that is stored here may not be visible, may not appear at the top of the list of hits in Google, so keep that in mind. But when you turn on this, then the page is public. You can copy the link and post it, okay? And you see how the link can be formulated with, can be traveling with privileges. Privilege is the uh, term that is used in a wiki or any other kind of similar software where you're granting collaborators or visitors the rights to just view the page or edit the page or View, view, view the page, view and edit the page, or view, edit, and comment on the page. So in here, clearly, I don't allow any kind of editing. I don't allow any kind of comment. It's a public page. I would do that if we were a team within a company, and therefore, I would know that anyone visiting the page would behave professionally if I make this public and then I open it to editing and commenting, it can be vandalized, it can be bombed, 
uh, etc. I still remember the first day of Zooming, I got bombed. Some of the students in the class shared the link, and I had two or three visitors who were acting like jerks at the end of the class. <laughs> okay, so people have this urge to be seen, to be uh, in the spotlight. So if I turn on these things, then the link will have code that informs the system, whoever comes with this link has these privileges. And you have editing, commenting, and the final, which I left on because it's pretty innocent, innocuous, is allow duplicate as template, which means you can borrow the template for this page, which is horrendous. It's just a hodgepodge of uh, examples. So, uh, but otherwise, why would I want this? Because again, within the framework of a professional company, some people might say, Bob, you've been assigned or Mary, you've been assigned to a project, you can borrow the template from Andrea's project because it is very similar. You visit the page, you import that template, and you save some time. That was just for the link. Okay? But what's important for us is the following. I clicked on people, right? Did you see that, or was it to invite, right? And when I click on invite, in here, of course, as a test, this is my wife, my wife's name, uh, and I invited her as a guest. In here, once again, that's where for your, both of your digital assignments, the digital, the written assignment, and so the assignment on my digital life, the assignment on the creation of your first page in Notion, or later on your project in Notion, that's where you would add my email, my Stony Brook email, and then in here, once again, you regulate the privileges. So you grant me access not only to view, but also to comment and edit the page, because this way I can leave comments to a paragraph, to an expression, telling you, oh, I really like this, or maybe you shouldn't be talking about a digital footprint, which is something slightly different than a digital lifestyle, right? And you can read those comments, okay? And again, you can leave the page private. You don't have to make the page public to share it with me. You can leave it private. I encourage you to leave it private. But then when you share it with me, I'll be the only one who's able to uh, do that, who's able to come to the page, read the contents, leave comments. And one of the comments on top of the page will be the assessment of the assignment and the grade, okay? And I've got into the habit, new compared to the last semester, of adding the handle of the, of the user, the user handle, so I put at sign and then Andrea, Tiffany, Erica, so that when you come back to Notion, you should be notified that I left a comment from, for you. I don't know if this also happens via email because of course I see things from a limited point of view. So let me see, let me show you in here, I would write, of course I have these options andrea.fedi at stonebook.edu and you can see the various levels of access, access privileges. Can view, cannot edit or share. Can comment, can view and comment but not edit. Can edit, can edit but not share with others. And full access can edit, share with others, which is not something I need, right? I don't need to share it with other people. I don't have a graduate assistant or anyone else I need to share it with, but if you leave me can edit, uh, then uh, I, I can do more with your text, I can add things or correct a thing if you didn't format something, I can correct it right away and then you can review it because I'll show you, you can see the history of the page so you can see what changes I made to your page. 
But this is the essential step. You go to share. You don't have to make the public, the page public if you don't want to, and I see no reason really to do that. However, you go to invite, you put in my email, you select can edit. At that point, when you click invite, I receive a notification, okay? And that's how I've received some of the assignments this week. Some people uh, got it in early and, and I've reviewed and uh, graded, commented on some of the assignments already. So I'll just ignore this. And you, as you can see, with these kinds of floating dialogues, I can just click out and exit it or I can press ask. Oh, there it is. I, I, I didn't see it, but it was right in my face. You didn't say anything. I know I'm old, but I, I don't need to be <laughs> cared for this much. Uh, you could have screamed, it's there. You see, search engine indexing means that you have this fine level of finer control that for, for any page that you make public, you can decide, I want to make it public and have it indexed by Google, by DuckDuckGo, by Alpha, any kind of uh, search engine or not. And if you don't, again, the server will instruct. So they cannot push away the bots, but they can include instructions for the bots to stay away and legally they have to comply, they have to adhere clearly Google, someone like Google will uh, do it. If it is a hacker spot collecting emails, then forget it. But they'll have a hard time finding the page in any case, okay? So that was share, and I'll just close it and go to the next. The next has the icon of a balloon, and you see view all comments. And are there any comments? Yes, there are. And you can see, of course, you can find those comments because if you scroll the page, you will see the icon for a comment and the number of comments indicating how long that discussion went to the right of the text. Because the traditional style for Notion, even though you can make the page wider, the traditional style and approach is to make the page narrow so that this kind of information can be included on the sites, such as the icon for comments, and you can find them specifically, but you can review, if you are a manager, you can review what is being going on in this page, and of course you can resolve some of the comments if they've reached a conclusion, the change was made, a decision was made, etc. okay? So that was something else, and of course I can close that as well. The clock, view all up, updates, allows me to see who did what to the page. So if there are several people collaborating, working as a group on a particular page, I'll be able to see what changes they made, same as you find with Google Docs. And you can do something like that with Microsoft Word, but it's a bit more cumbersome. Okay, these tools are made for collaboration. And of course you find not only who did what, but when, etc. And I close that as well. As I said before, the star means you're favoriting this page. You're sending this page to the favorite section of the sidebar. That would be whatever page you're working on and therefore every day or multiple times a day you need to open that page and put content, revise content on that page or work on the completion of that page before publication. Finally, you have the three dots and you know three dots are usually associated with the menu and that's the case in here and you have a more complex, more involved menu. First section gives you the chance to pick one of three styles for the font. And you might say, why can't I put ink journal or uh, book antiqua uh, in here? Well, aesthetics, the elegance of the page is not exactly the primary focus for this. If that is the 
primary quality you assign to public published material, then you need to go to an HTML editor of some other kind. This is a wiki. The focus here is on producing and publishing and sharing and organizing content as much content as possible, as quickly as possible. So the cosmetics are secondary. That's why you just have default serif or mono to choose from. And of course, the moment you apply one, you see the difference, right? It's immediate. That's the advantage. It's published right away. It's applied right away. You don't need to confirm, save, publish as you would do with other kinds of software. You can make the text smaller by default. You can, as I said before, make the page occupy all the space it has. But again, that's not usually the idea, both because you want to have comments visible on the side because you'll need comments. And also because, as I said before, a narrower page means that I can focus my eyes when I'm reading on blocks of texts that I can absorb right away. I don't need to go like this, like with a book with a lot of characters on each line. I want to be able to see and scroll, right? Because every time I point my eyes at a line, I can see almost all of the relevant words and I go down looking for the specific information that I want to find. The others, again, are not that important. Customized page is, is really some minor adjustments you can make to the discussion or the comments. Lock page is important. Of course, at some point, a project will be finished, a page is ready for publication, and you lock it because you don't want anything to happen to that page even by mistake, right? You have a lot of people collaborating, mistakes are possible, someone types uh, the wrong numbers in it after they've been approved, and there you have it, you've offered your customers a discount uh, that is, is ruinous for your business. I'm thinking of this because just yesterday I was reading that a company in Italy uh, uh, that has a series of uh, shops where you go uh, like spa shops for makeup, relaxation, massages, etc. They had a point program. And they realized too late, after the month of January was over, that someone, after they decided that the value of each point gained through paying services there was five cents per point, five euro cents per point, when it came to programming those rewards, someone wrote 05 instead of 005. Mm -hmm. And therefore, each point was worth 50 cents instead of 5 cents. And instead of paying up to their customers 50,000 50, euros in rewards just for January, they paid half a million. For a company whose budget in a year runs in, in the millions, not less than 10 million. So that's a huge amount that they lost, 450,000 for a clerical error. So there is always this danger, you lock the page so that no mistakes are done and until the page really needs to be reopened and revised. Again, you can add it to favorites from here, you can copy the link. You can open in the Windows app or Mac app because Notion I use it from the browser. Most people use it from the browser. It's the most practical approach, but you actually have even a desktop version or app for Windows, for Mac, for iOS, okay? So it's up to you. As I said, I use the browser all the time, but if you'd rather rely on the desktop app, feel free to install that. The functionality is the same. The interface is the same. I don't see any clear advantage uh, to, uh, to this. It's a preference, it's a matter of preferences. Of course, you have undo. Once again, you have the page history, which we saw before as well. 
show deleted pages because again if you're a manager you want to see what was deleted to catch a mistake if something was deleted by mistake you want to be able to revert it before it is too late so the professional uh, the professional subscription to which you have free uh, access as a student with an edu email account gives you about a month 30 or 31 days of versioning meaning you you can restore, recover something that was changed or deleted. You can import something into the page or more importantly, you can export the page and you can make it into a PDF, which is easy, into an HTML page for publication on another server. So you work in here, but then you export it somewhere else. Markdown means that you have a page with a universal kind of code where every feature in the page is associated with this language, which can then be converted, if you have software such as Pandoc, you can then convert Markdown into 20 or 30 different forms of typesetting, of publishing and templating, okay? And in fact, uh, right now there are scientific journals that will require Markdown to be used for their articles so that they can then convert it in whatever software they're using at the moment more easily than going from a Word file, a PDF file, etc. And since a lot of people are using Slack, you can connect a page to a Slack channel where people are discussing their tasks, etc. Move to means you move a page to some other group of pages, right? So let's say you have a group of pages that are in the draft stage once the page is ready for publication, you move it to a public group. And by just by moving it, you have it published, you have it shared, and your group of pages, the group of pages you are working on, is reduced, and you can move to the next task. And finally, in light gray, you find the word count for the page, who last edited the page, when it was last act, okay? All essential for this kind of work. If what I showed you is clear enough, I will continue. However, I will pause because as I said, it's essential that you understand the process of sharing and maybe I went too fast or, or there are aspects that you were expecting to see and I didn't cover. So let me know now if you have questions that are specific to the kind of process you have to follow for the assignment. So yes, please. Are we creating the more digital life the kind of in Notion, or could you like create it like on something else and stick upload Notion? It's fine. So for the written assignment, if your preference in terms of learning style is to use Word or Good Notes or whatever makes you more creative, you can do that and then copy and paste the text into, into a Notion page. And again, the assignment on uh, your digital lifestyle, your digital life, is just a narrative, it's just a text. You don't have to make it fancy. Format the title as a title, why not? And if you need to add bullet points or italics, do that, but that's not the main point for that. As far as the other assignment, the creation of the first page in Notion, there you have to be fancier, you have to show that you've thought of some kind of content that can be organized in sections and subsections accompanied by images and embedded video by links, etc., etc., where you will find a list so that I can see that you can do all of those things, okay? And length is secondary. I didn't really, I don't think I indicated the number of words. What I want to see is a variety of uh, formatting that makes sense for the content. So think of a meaningful content that could be matched with a variety of styles. If you want to borrow the example I gave you, which is a classical playground example, recipe or recipes, go ahead, absolutely. Or if you think of something else, that's fine too, okay? And follow your passions. If you are familiar with a game, create a page about a game a video game, or if you want to create a page about a celebrity or an athlete, do that, or if you want to organize some of your notes, 
and you find that all of those features would be a good match stylistically, go ahead. If you're not sure yet, you can also send me an email saying, this is the idea that I have in mind, this is the content that I have in mind, would it be okay? Now, when it will come the time to complete the final project, the final digital project there, meaningful is not sufficient. You have to select content that has a strong, uh, where, where knowledge is, is, is the focus really. So we'll discuss what kinds of contents would be suitable for the final project, although some of the examples I gave could be replicated. So this time a book of recipes would not fly for the final digital project. However, if you want to organize the complex notes that you took for this class or another class, that would be great, or anything else that is related to knowledge, and therefore you can organize knowledge you can get knowledge out of the system through your organization. Those become essential points. Yes, please. Um, so you said uh, we shouldn't write like my favorite application is TikTok or Instagram, such a thing, but I don't know. Like, you, you, exactly. you can, but it should be a narrative. That is to say, it should be more than a series of points. So are you right? saying that we should write regarding our visitor life? Yeah, the purpose, of, so whatever style you, you choose, you can have a variety of creative uh, templates to follow, but your goal is to describe your profile as a digital user of things you need to use. You have to, whether you like them or not, as a student or as a worker, you might have a work job, a job where you use apps and programs and also apps and programs you use as entertainment that are digital as well. So it's more than just a list. At minimum, it would be a list of those apps and programs you use with the description of how you use them, why you use them, what you get that is useful or pleasant out of them. But keep in mind that overall, the reader by the end should have an idea of who are you as a digital user? As a student who relies on digital tools or as a young person who relies on digital tools for their social media or their entertainment? Okay, that would be the, the other end of the spectrum, the, uh, the, the higher kind of goal. Okay, but it's still a simple reflection on your life depending on how you organize it, it becomes clearer, more convincing, or it remains cut and dry. I use Word to write, I use Spotify to listen to music because I like the quality of the music, I like the choice that it offers me, uh, etc. And you can see the difference between a very good and excellent assignment and one that is just good. Uh, I don't think you can really do a bad assignment with this unless you write two sentences, <laughs> unless you just include the names of the apps with no comments or hardly any comments. More questions? And if I don't see you, the room is kind of wide and I also have that light of the projector in my eyes. Uh, if I don't see you, just, just call my attention. Okay, let me continue and explain some of the advanced features. This is the list that I have. I'll see if I can do all of them, otherwise I'll finish tomorrow. This is what I put. I want to show you before the end of the week how to embed a PDF, a Google Map, a Google Drive file. We did how to share a page. And I have included bookmarks where you find the very useful, very clear, very well-structured, very essential pages of the help wiki for Notion. So if you want to review what I said or see more, learn more about it, click on those bookmarks. I want to show you how to create a new page with a table, which is not required for the first digital assignment on Notion, but if you do a project on Notion, that is the foundational requirement. Without that, 
you lose points, just, just to be direct, blunt. And within a page, we can add tags, and tags will help us filter the content. And of course, we want to see also what was the quick find, which can become slightly more advanced. Finally, another advanced feature, which is required for final project, not required at all for your digital assignment or notion, is syncing and syncing is another way to talk about something else even though there is a wavy red line this is a term that is used by programmers and digital professionals transclusion means that you want to have in an advanced project the kind a kind of dynamic organization of content whereby there is content that belongs to one page that is content that belongs to multiple pages. If you have such content that needs to be repeated in different pages or in different formats across pages, then you don't want to, if you make a change, modif go to every single page and change it every time. You just sync those bits, it can be a single block or a whole page. After you sync it, any change you make to a synced block will be reflected, will be mirrored across all the pages, saving you a lot of time. But it's not just about time, right? You might have a disclaimer at the bottom of the page, a legal disclaimer, and then you decide, the lawyers send you a memo in your company and they say, change the disclaimer to include this additional term. And you don't want to do it inside 150 pages or 15,000 pages. And you do it once and the change is transferred across the system. It's more also about knowledge, because when it comes to knowledge, you want to have two things. One, you want to have single bits of knowledge, the size of which is determined by their relevance or topic. You don't want to flat overwhelm the user with pages and pages where they have to scroll or use the internal find to find what they want. To. You want to present content in a format whereby within the first screen or the first and second screen, the user will find what they're looking for. However, you always also need to present longer narratives for another kind of consumption. You can achieve both by having the building blocks of content data as separate pages, but then you sync them with one page that includes several blocks or all of the blocks because you also want to offer that kind of access to yourself and other users. This is what I want to do between now and Friday. So I go to the test page. I'll, I'll leave syncing at the end. Let's go to embedding. I want to show you also, this is Markdown. You see this gray box? It is the answer to one simple problem. When you want to put on a page, not simple text, but some kind of coding, how do you do that? In my case, my problem was, if I want to show that this kind of typed code produces this, how do I do it? Because the moment I type, it becomes this map. So I select the block, I turn it into code, or I put slash code and then proceed from there. You see that I have a drop-down menu here. From the drop-down menu, I can select specifically what kind of code this is, and you might not recognize many of that, but we can go up and then you recognize Java, you recognize JavaScript, because of course if you study programming at Stony Brook, a lot of Java, right? Even though it's not the most brilliant, the most exciting kind of programming language, etc. So once I select one, not only I can write something without starting a modification on the page, prompting a modification that I don't want to, but I will have the colors that are associated with the language and the other standards associated with each language within that block. 
So that allows me, in my case, through Markdown, to show that I want to keep the slash here, because whenever I use the slash, then an action follows and it disappears. And as I said, it's very simple. When you type a slash, and I was wrong earlier. I said you have to do it at the beginning of a line, and that's how you do it usually. But now they've added the feature that you can do it anywhere within the line. You can type a slash and initiate a command. And you very much use natural language, and you have several options. So if you want to use an audio file, you can type slash audio or slash sound. It doesn't matter. If you want to add a Google map, you can type Google map, maps. And as long as you're typing, the options of autocomplete will be offered. Or it is Google, so why not type Google? And you'll get the instructions to, the simple instructions to include a map. And there you have it. It's a nice, very nice embedded map. This is my hometown in Tuscany. It's called Pistoia. It's about 20 miles from Florence, right before the mountains that separate Tuscany from uh, northern Italy. Okay? And of all places, I've come to Long Island, which is pretty much the flattest place on Earth. Right? What is the, the tallest hill? 300 feet? And notice that it's not an image. It's a working and active map. Right? I can zoom in and out once I've embedded the map. And you can see where it is. You see Florence. You see Italy. And notice that I can get any one of these handles. And I can make it narrower, shorter, wider to fit my page. And of course, I can grab it from the side and put it next to a text if I want to. Very nice. Not as nice the embedding of documents. I remember a time when it was possible to embed a Google Doc file and then work from within Notion. So you would have an active window where you could scroll the document, type inside the document. Not anymore, of course, because you know how these things happen commercially and legally. This would be similar to what is called deep linking. If I take an article from the New York Times and embed it in my uh, website, then I'm stealing content, right? I'm generating traffic that is not the result of my own work. The New York Times will send me a cease and desist letter. And in this case, Google evidently and Notion didn't find an agreement, and therefore this feature was removed. What you have is that if you put Google and then select Google Drive, you can select a Google slide file, a Google Docs file, etc. And instead of a regular bookmark, you have this, where the first time you do it, you can see the contents of the beginning of the page. However, it's so limited that if I go to this file, look at this. If I go to this file and if I change um, this, it doesn't really update, at least I think, let me see, if I click in here, no it did actually, you know, I didn't notice that, so it doesn't update live, but eventually it does update, so let me try again, let me test this, of course sometimes they're changing these features, uh, so I say let me add this, Okay, so this has been saved to drive. I come here, I don't see this. Let me refresh the page. Let me go to my embedded. And you see that whatever I added after lectures was not reflected there. However, eventually it seems it will be synced with this still kind of limited, just a, a souped up bookmark, okay? And if I type slash PDF, then I can embed a PDF, which is very nice, because within that I can scroll down, I can read the PDF without leaving the page, right? Very useful. 
what else is there? No, the embedding is done. I'll stop here. 